Jaya Prabhuji. Hello, welcome to the Retro Progressive Yoga Institute. My name is Swami Karananda. I am a disciple of Prabhuji since 1997, and in this institute I share my reflections and understandings on the teachings of Prabhuji. This is the course number four that we are doing on his book, Tantra, Liberation in the World, in which he shares the treasures of the Tantric Revelation. This book takes us through the whole process from the different approach to the divine, from the special way these seekers walk the walk, and the very, very special way that they connect it to the divine. They were innovators, they were a bit revolutionary for their time, they wanted to open horizons for everyone to seek the divine in his own individual and unique way, and they were for the rules of the divine and not the rules of the humans. And therefore, they knew that they need to find their connection within in order to know what is right and what is wrong. And in this way, they just challenge the conventions and they open an ocean of possibilities that influence almost every existing religion and we, the resonance of their revelation, still we enjoy from it today. Of course, Prabhuji, as a seeker that looked everywhere for traces of the divine, he encountered the attitude of the Tantric revelation and definitely incorporated to his own search and to his path of retroprogressive yoga. And therefore, he dedicated the whole book to explain the principles, the development, the spiritual precious uh, stones that we find in this revelation and all the time trying to make it so relevant for you and for me because this is what really matters. If we encounter the wisdom of Tantra along our path, it means that might be something to give us. And it's not to sit and admire the sages of your but to make your life more saintly, more wise, and more closer to the true nature of what we are. And in these courses, we're just learning about the different uh, paths, and it's fascinating because the uh, different sects of this revelation might take so different approach, but it's something in the spirit of the Tantra, there is something liberating, early, aiming high, uh, leaving behind the just the aspiration for an organized and ordered life, for a total liberation in the way that is in the world. That's why the book is called Liberation in the World. Uh, we will not aspire to be liberated once when we leave our body or when we get enough punya, enough merit for higher uh, incarnations than this very low and dark place that we call home. But in this place we can find the divine. We can see everything from the eyes of the beyond. And this is the eyes that all the tantric practices try to give. This class is very special because after we learn a whole course about the Pashupatas, which were the first Shaiva sect that start in experimenting with new approaches, taking the path of asceticism combined with the path of devotion, creating a whole beautiful connection to Shiva in his aspect of Sadashiva or in his aspect of the Shiva Lingam, we start now speaking in this course about the Lakulas and the Kapalikas. Those seekers were more daring to experiment with unknown territories and they move their worship from the old benevolent Shiva to his fearful and uh, terrifying aspect of Bhairava. Now, to understand this archetype of Bhairava, this deity, this lord, the bestower 
of liberation, the bestower of the wisdom, is so central to understand their choices, their practices, and definitely the tantric revelation itself. Why? Because the one who will give the most secret teachings, the ones that they are really challenging, different, difficult, but liberating, will be actually Lord Bhairava. And with the beautiful and loving relationship with his consorts, the goddess Bhairavi, they will create for us the perfection of the relation mas relationship master-disciple. He will be the perfect guru, the one who can give the right wisdom that will be relevant for the seeker, and she will become the wise, devoted, committed disciple that she's seeking for knowledge, for the benefit not only of her, but of all humanity, asking the perfect questions, focusing on what really matters. And this beautiful relationship will, as the Tantra develop, will become the opposite, and he, Shiva, as the all-powering and omni-science can acquire the position of the disciple, that he surrender and is totally uh, fascinating by the beauty of the goddess, and he will be the one begging for knowledge and guidance from her. So we are going into this journey, but before that we need to understand very well the significance of Bhairava and the approach of Prabhuji towards all this uh, symbolism and mythology of the Tantra. So we will dedicate this class to it. Let's get started. Lord Bhairava. Bhairava is a fierce and formidable form of Lord Shiva, often associated with aspects of destruction and transformation. The development of the god Bhairava can be understood as a progression through various stages and contexts within the broader Hindu tradition. Whoever is familiar with the Hindu spirituality might find very intuitive that there, is, there are different aspects of God and that we connect to them in different ways. I am afraid that for whoever is more used to Semitic type of spirituality, there is one name, one God, one aspect, and this is the only way to connect to the path. So in Hinduism in general, and in Tantra in particular, there are many, many doors. Prabhupada sometimes relate to these aspects as doors, that one door, it will be just the perfect door that opens you and connects you. And Tantra is also focused on a very specific type of seeker. They are the more rebel seekers, the path went and become more left hand, they're non-conformists, they usually it's focused on serious and committed seekers, that they understand the limitations of the mind to know yourself, and they want to dare to break a bit the convention and to go beyond the comfort zone. So for these souls that they are very uh, eager and impatient, they might ignite with this type of worship and might not be right for everyone. But what I think we need to study along the classes and along this book, that it will be full with the descriptions of the mythology of the gods, of the teachings, is how to connect in the right way, in a way that we will feel this inspiration, this connection and this understanding. It's because the, the gods come to wash a bit our, our ignorance, and the way I, I, I watch and witness, the way that Prabhuji connects to deities, is uh, unbelievable. It's a very central aspect of his spiritual life. It's, uh, it's very serious. It's, it's been taken very seriously with a lot of awe and respect. 
and, uh, and devotion. And he's ever grateful for the favors he gets from all these different aspects. So there is a secret there and there is a hint that he's trying to share. But more than anything, if he can ignite this uh, spark of devotion in our heart, this, this from there, the fire, the fire will continue and burn eventually all our ignorance. The other day he, saw, he said something so beautiful when he was watching on his deities with the burning devotion. He said, to be a devotee, you need to be chosen. It's, it's a position that not everybody is chosen for it. It's, uh, it's a grace given to, in this world, to fulfill the function of a devotee. And it's precious. It's so precious. You can be chosen to fulfill many functions in this world, but the function of the devotee is something that you need to get from the deity. And this is the darshan. When you go to the darshan, it's, darshan is from the word to see. You go to the temple, not to see the deity. I go to see the deity and then to get inspiration. I go to be seen by the deity. I cannot do the devotion in a way that is an active choice of my heart. Naturally, I will choose the mundane, I will choose the known, I will choose the pleasure, I will escape from pain. This is my natural tendency as a human psyche. To have devotion is not of this world. It's something for the beyond. It's this curiosity, it's this mag magnetic attraction for something that cannot be explained and cannot be seen, but it takes over everything else and everything else look dull. So remember answer, telling Prabhupada, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to be chosen as a devotee. What a, what a beautiful way to see it and what a, what a privilege to be chosen, to be a devotee in this world. And Prabhupada said, everyone is chosen. It's not special. Everyone is chosen. And with this devotion, you can directly direct it to the things that your heart follows. People are devoted, everyone is devoted to something. Can be to coupleship, can be to money, can be to honor, to fame. Everybody is devoted to something where the heart goes. So it is about turning your devotion towards the Divine. And the way, the merciful way that the Divine uses to attract us is to be embodied in a form, in a daily, in a form, in the iconography, in a symbology, in a way that we can somehow connect and let our attention turn from the temporal to some hint of the eternal that manifests within our temporal realm. So there are, there are secrets there, and this is what I want to, to say. And I, I don't consider myself, I consider a beggar of devotion. I consider myself not a devotee. But um, I think by just, and it's known, just by speaking about and, and engaging with their stories and where their symbology Something goes and cleans, you know, like a, in Vaishnavism we said there is like a dark mirror. The heart is a dark and, and dirty mirror that needs to be polished and polished and polished. So, so to study and to learn and to read books like this, it's just a polishing. Eventually we will be able to reflect ourselves in the mirror of our hearts and realize our true nature. So what we're going to start this lecture is by a very brief walk through the stages in which this deity appeared and gave its grace, and then we will go more into the symbology. In the timeline of the development of Bhairava, we can start from the Vedic period that started thousands of years ago already, 
but we can trace the first uh, books to 1500 before the current era and the uh, tradition continues to develop until the 600 before the current era. At that time, a Bhairava was a, called by the name Rudra. It was the god Rudra associated with destruction. Bhairava in general is the archetype of fear and destruction. And it was the god of the hunters, the god of the thunder, the god of those who walk in the nights. And um, it was a prominent uh, um, um, deity, but a maybe, maybe a minor deity in the pantheon. But with time, he went and acquired more and more importance until it became associated with Shiva. Later on, in the period of the Puranas, that we can say that started 300 before the current era until the 300 of the current era, we see the raising an importance of this aspect of the divine and uh, Rudra got to be associated with Shiva and with Bhairava in the aspect of destruction. He became a part of the tree multi the aspect of Shiva that destroys the words. In the earlier medieval period, that we can say between the 600 and the 900 of the current era, we see the revelation of the Tantra. Now Bhairava became so central in the, Vedic, in the Tantric revelation, becoming the revealer of the Tantric wisdom. And we see a different manifestation of Bhairava, many different manifestations. Every sect uh, had a different Bhairava, but mainly we had eight Bhairavas, the Ashta Bhairavas, and they are equal to eight different stages of consciousness, consciousness in the path of the seeker. In the later medieval period, between 850 approximately to 1200, we see the emergence of Kashmir Shaivism or non-dual Trika Shaivism. In that time, Bhairava was the supreme deity, the supreme divine, and the one who teaches the path of self-realization. The main figure of that time, Abhinavagupta, explained in length in his Tantra Loka why Bhairava is the most appropriate name and deity to be worshipped eh, in order to achieve actually non-dual experience of the divine. So if devotion or deities are related to a dual experience, the aim of the Kashmir Shaivism was the complete disappearance and union with the divine. And yet, he called that state of union Bhairava state. But what is so amazing is in the post-medieval and the modern period, the tradition of the Bhairava lives on. Although all the destruction and, uh, and uh, confusion from the 1200 on until the present era, we see that he continues to be worshipped in various forms of Hinduism and Buddhism. It's known that Tantra influenced Buddhism, creating a whole new branch of Buddhism, but especially Bhairava was incorporated to the worship of Tantric Buddhism. And we see a life tradition, we see the deities being worshipped in India, Nepal and different parts till today. The diverse manifestations and characteristics attributed to Lord Bhairava serve as a reflection of the intricate mythology and symbolism associated with him, as well as his multifaceted roles within Hindu texts and narratives. While Lord Bhairava is often depicted as fierce and formidable in textual references, a closer analysis reveals his true nature as a righteous and benevolent deity. So here we have Bhairava, a 
intriguing deity, that his appearance is so fearful, and we're not going to today on the iconography of him, but he's depicting with a dog, with a fierce dog, with skulls, with weapons. And a superficial understanding might give us the impression that it's kind of a devil worship, that we worship the horrific aspect of the divine or the, or the, the evil forces. And this is not the case. The, the god Bhairava, in fact, is the protector of his devotees. And he helps in the destruction of everything that can be destroyed in order to discover that which always have been. And the symbolism of this deity along the path of his development is so fascinating that I want to stop and before we go on in studying it, is to drink a bit from the approach of Prabhuji towards deities, mythology and um, worship. Prabhuji wrote a book recently, his last book is called The Symbolic Turn. And this is a fascinating book that I dream about doing my next course on it. It's a complicated and difficult book, but full of uh, uh, important point of how to approach all what is related to deities, to religion, to um, mythology, and uh, with the spirit that Prabhuji explains in that book, I think it's very different how we can benefit from uh, in connecting and uh, interacting with these deities. So, it requires a whole course to understand that book further, but I will just bring a few paragraphs that will help us to take something of the spirit in which Prabhuji sees the divine, the, div the worship of the divine, and how we can, with the help of his uh, guidance, approach Bhairava in the right way. When venturing down the path of religion, it is essential to understand that the mythical characters that populate it are, in their essence, entities of a symbolic nature. Although they are imbued with meaning, give cohesion, and externalize profound aspects of the human condition, they lack an objective and palpable existence in the physical realm. As long as we keep in mind such a transcendent distinction, Divinities can be experienced in a transcendental way in our existence, giving us invaluable support and help. The symbolic turn by Prabhuji. We are in the search of the transcendental. And we are trapped in the realm of the physical and palpable. But somehow we feel incomplete. We feel curious about the beyond and the distance that separates us from whoever cannot be grasped. This is the gap that we are aiming to close. How we can reconnect, how we can know our origin, how I can, we can know the secrets of life the religions, these mythical figures, are a hand from the transcendental that we can grasp and go and elevate. It's in the modern disbelief, it's very common to discard all these stories as primitive. But the fact is that eh, without Without this hand, instead of finding more meaning and happiness and answers, we stay more confused and lost. Those mythical figures that we inherit really from seekers of the past, from masters that realize themselves and leave us these hints and these scriptures and these um, rites and rituals, 
They are invaluable in our life as long as we take it in the right way. It's very known, and I will say it one more time, Prabhupada is never for believe. This is kind of a word that is not in his lexicon. It's not believe in Bhairava. Have um, accept Bhairava based on belief. We are going to explore ourselves and the help of the exploration in the realm of the connection with these mythical figures is based on a symbology, a symbolo sim symbology basis. And the, they have so much to give us, not in a conceptual form, not in a way of perception, but in the connection in a deeper level, which is beyond the logic and beyond the words. And the, the way that we can um, present to our senses something that is before the senses is with these mythical figures. So what Prabhuji in the symbolic term, that this is the name of the book, is to, instead of discard the mythology and the religion, to find the connection with the beyond through these very powerful figures which give us the hint, the path, the help, the power to elevate from our simple level of belief, because we believe, even if we say I don't believe even anything, we believe in the world, we believe in what we see, but there is something hidden from us, which is the self, which is the being of all the things. Prabhupada might say, it's not hidden, it's just there, you just don't pay attention to it. Enchanted by the names and forms, colors, sounds, tastes, you are overlooking the essence and looking for the essence where it cannot be found. So the invitation of Prabhuji is to, yes to connect to this figure and Prabhuji personally very powerful takes from these connections so much fuel for his search and his elevation to connect to this but in the symbolic way. So next we will study just a few aspects of the symbolism of Lord Bhairava. Bhairava, fierce and terrifying. Bhairava is typically depicted as a deity with a fierce appearance, which symbolizes his role as a destroyer of ignorance and ego. He is often shown with multiple arms, wearing a garland of skulls and adorned with various ornaments. The destroyer of ignorance and ego. The topic of Bhairava again and again is fear. He's fearful, it makes us afraid, and the aspect of fear that Prabhuji speaks about it so much is one of the two main chains of our slavery. Prabhuji said desire and fear. Desire is something that I want to happen in the future. Fear is something that I want that it will not happen in the future. So both desires and fears are creating our expectations for the future, ignoring the path, tensing us because the desires and fears are the two main focus of our tension and therefore we are stuck in this wheel of time. Prabhuji invites us, and Bhairava is, is a wonderful way for that, is to explore our fear and to watch and to look. Bhairava represents everything that we are afraid of. And the conquer of the fear is a very important aspect in our search. Prabhuji dedicated few lectures about speaking about the aspect of fear on the spiritual path. In this one, I will bring you some of the sentences he says, and we will connect and understand better the symbolism of Bhairava based on the spiritual guidance of Prabhuji. Let's hear. We know from different scriptures about the fear of the disciple
when he face a divine experience, mystical experiences, and especially in the last steps before enlightenment. When we speak about Bhairava, we don't speak about a distant and imaginary deity. We speak about our human experience of fear. Now Prabhuji in this lecture says, we know that the spiritual seekers, when they go and advance in their exposure to the beyond, they experience fear, especially in front of the unknown, in front of mystical experiences that they are different than the ordinary state of consciousness. And when they go closer to enlightenment, what will prevent from them is the fear. So no wonder that Shiva takes this aspect of Bhairava and help us to work with the fear. Is the fear of the unknown that tends us and doesn't allow us to relax and to surrender. So when we develop a relationship with the fearful Bhairava, we are learning to face our fears. And the fear is necessary part of the illusion. The fear is an instinctive feeling. And the, the gift that we have, that we can project different scenarios of what's going to happen next, which honestly, we have no idea what's going to happen next, but we have like different scenarios. The fact that we can imagine fearful scenarios in the future help us to survive because we can prevent them if we take the right measurements. But what happened, we miss completely this moment. And often we overthink because we are trapped in this mind reality and we are more tense and condensed and we don't live fully because the tension of the fear of what all can happen. And we can all witness from our lives that often what we fear from never happen and what happened we can not even imagine that would come from there. So this, this waste of energy is what Bhairava invites us to do. Face the fear, worship the fear, love the fear, like make come in terms with this. And eventually you will need to confront your fears and develop this bravery if you want one day to be able to stand in your true nature, which is nothing from what you know and feel safe. It's very known that the courage, the, the quality of the courage is essential to develop in spiritual life. It's the, the lion of Judah that needs to be brave in front of the divine. It's the uh, courage that Shankara speaks about in the Viveka Chudamani. We see this term again and again, Prabhupada said here in different scriptures, in different aspects. We need to develop this courage to go to this unknown path. The Kapalikas, the Lakulas, this is what they dealt with. They knew that they can develop and they can advance and they can know a lot. But if they don't conquer fear, they will not get free. And this is how voluntarily they went to scary places. They live in the forest by themselves. They, they, they slept in crematoriums where there are spirits. They try to develop this strength that is a sign of surrender. So let's see more aspects of this fascinating deity. Bhairava, liberator from fear. Bhairava is believed to liberate devotees from fear. His fierce form is believed to help individuals overcome their inner fears and obstacles on their spiritual path. The only way to overcome whatever is haunting us is to look at this. 
This is the retroprogressive path, is the path of observation. This is the psychology path to, to take from whatever is hunting you in the subconscious and bring it to light so you can deal with it. And we can put the face of bravery, but this bravery will be put to test either in this life or either in the last moment before liberation. And if we are serious on the path, we need to have all the tools that require. And one of them is to watch our fears. And the worship of the, of the Bhairava deity is one of the tools that the Tantra liberation, the Tantra revelation gives to start dealing with this. And the topic of desire and fear is the topic of Tantra, how to deal with your desires, not to repress them, but sublimate them, and how to confront your fears. We have the beautiful example of the life of Prabhuji, that is so kind and merciful, that he shares from his journey, so helping and preparing us towards our own path. So on the topic of fear, this is what he said about his own experience. This was my own experience when I was eight years old. That brings me back from that ocean of infinite ocean of light. Many times, if you remember, I say that in some point I was afraid and then everything comes back. Especially in the beginning, in your meeting with the truth, with awareness, with consciousness that is Satchit Ananda, according to Vedanta, <clears throat> existence, consciousness, and happiness. It is love. Prabhuji shares here from his own experience when he was eight years old that he had this divine touch in which he was exposed to the ultimate truth and he was afraid. And he says that in the moment of fear, of the contraction of fear, is the moment when everything disappeared. So the importance of preparing ourselves for that final cross line is what we do by this worship, by confronting this element, by watching ourselves. The symbology of Vairava is not to escape from whatever you are afraid of, but to look, to watch, to confront, and then to discover that is love. There is a way of love, that whatever will disappear is not you. That, that that is afraid, you are afraid for the things that are not you. That whatever is eternal cannot be, cannot be taught, cannot be touched, cannot be killed. As there is nothing to be afraid of. So the fear is because what you are identifying with. Fear as a gateway to surrender. Bhairava's fear-inducing presence can also serve as a gateway to surrender. In the face of overwhelming fear, individuals may surrender the ego and sense of control, opening themselves up to divine grace and guidance. Surrender to Bhairava 
is an act of trust where individuals relinquish their fears and place their faith in the transformative power of the daily. So how this worship of Bhairava was practiced by Tantricas. It was a very real way to confront this. It's not to worship Bhairava in a safe place of a temple with all the paraphernalia and the chanting. That is Shiva. That is the Shiva Lingam. That is the right path. We are speaking about Bhairava. Bhairava is the left hand. Bhairava is worship with your own blood. Bhairava is worship in the forest, in the darkness, in the nights. This is the Lord Rudra, the Lord of the hunters, the Lord of the thunder, the Lord of death. So many people were reluctant to even deal with this type of energy and it's not only a symbol of it, it's felt, it's pumping, it's your heart beating, it's fearful, it's there, it's presence. When Bhairava comes, you feel, you want to run away, you want to forget about it, you want to hide. Instead of us, Bhairava asks you to surrender, to surrender. And Believe me, this tantric worship was non-conventional. You didn't feel safe worshiping the same way you are used to from childhood. It's to take a path of radical, radical change and confrontation of your inner, inner phantoms. And the symbolism of this deity is that it helps you to develop this surrender. Because when you are afraid, you feel that you lose control of the situation. And if you are able to let Bhairava take control and take you, take everything that is known to you and liberate you, so then you can cross over this ocean of illusion. It's so fascinating, the path of Prabhuji. I come back there because he went through this path and he had to to do the work in order to reach where he is now. And he's sharing this so we can know what expect us and what the work that we need to do. We need to observe ourselves, we need to confront our fears, we need to develop this devotion that will help us with this surrender because the, the real test will come to everyone and the question will be, are you ready? When God knocks your door, that you ask so much, that you pray for it, are you ready to follow? That will be the question. Bhairava is that deity that prepares you, that helps you, that without crossing the test of Bhairava, you will not reach Shiva. Symbolically, in many Shiva temples, the Lord Bhairava is the guardian of the of the temple. You need to pass through him, his energy, his presence, his worship, in order to reach the transcendental consciousness of Shiva. So he is a test, he is a gate, but he also is a hand to help you to surrender. So let's see how Prabhuji describes his own path. Only when, when I went back, when I was, uh, you know, in a, I was 40, how old I was? Yes. Less, 39, 38. Yeah, like 30 years after when in Haifa in that night, evening, that I sit, then was much, was very, was the same but different, totally different because I was different. I was not eight years old, and I was after like a preparation of 30 years. And one of the things that I assure myself is that if one time happens in the future, someday, not to be afraid. It's so powerful. 
because he was so little when this first happened. He said, I need to prepare myself. I need to be ready for it. And he dedicated all his life, 30 years, to become ready for that moment. But in many different aspects to be ready. But he put here emphasis. One thing I remind myself, if it ever, ever happened again, and he was praying and he was hoping and he was desperate, it ever happened again, not to be afraid. That was what prevented from him the enlightenment and this is what took him out of the experience. And this is the preparation and this is the symbolism that we find in Bhairava. Prabhuji writes, ascetic practitioners perform these rituals in terrifying places with mortuary elements such as human skulls and ashes of the death. They invoked a group of wild and ferocious goddesses often imagined as spirits of nature, Apsaras, Dakinis, Matris, Gahis, and so on, who were led by a main goddess or Bhairava himself. According to the mythology, if the ritual was successful, the sadaka will be accepted by the goddesses in their clan, Kula, and will rise to heaven with them to become the leader of their wild band. In other words, he will become Bhairava. There were rituals performed in forests, in full moon nights, where if you were brave enough, you go and worship Bhairava. The practitioner didn't know if it would go successful. It was risky. It was a risky and, and not everybody was brave enough to undertake this type of ritual. They invoke spirits. They invoke powerful forces. It was scary. Now the sadaka needed to stay steady fast in their devotion to Bhairava, no matter what happened. And there were very many mortuorious elements involved in the ritual. And if the sadaka managed to stay calm without contracting himself out of fear, the ritual will be successful. The, he, his soul, his spirit will be accepted to the kula, to the group of yoginic, and he will become Bhairava. He will become one with Bhairava. This was the nature of the Bhairava worship in the context of these ascetics. And in the Tantra went and continued this very wild. And that's why it was, it was esoteric. You needed to be accepted. It was unconventional. And it was aimed to become this surrender soul that this very elevated revelation required. Embracing the unknown. Bhairava's fear-inducing aspect symbolizes the unknown and the unpredictable nature of existence. Devotees learn to embrace the mysteries of life and surrender to the divine will. By confronting the fear and stepping into the unknown, individuals can experience personal growth and spiritual evolution. If we analyze the nature of fear, it is related to the unknown. If we surrender to whatever comes and we trust that we will be given whatever we need is the state that prepares us to receive whatever is so unknown to us that is our own disappearance. Of course, we have this instinctive awareness for protecting our survival. And this is something that nature gave us in order to learn to be careful. 
But if we look, most of the things that keep us in the tension of the fear are mental scenarios that are more a product of our lack of surrender. It's more our desires that they want things to be one way and I'm afraid that it will not go that way. M most of the fear, because we have this uh, ability to develop the human realm, sorry, mental realm in which we are trapped, we are living in tension, in tension of what's going to be. And the, um, the deity of Bhairava requires surrender to me. Trust me. I will take you lovingly into the unknown, but not before you learn to overcome the fear. What's going to be, you cannot even imagine. It's not one of your experiences that no one, and Prabhuji testifies it from his own experience. It's scary. It's terrifying. When you go to the brink of your disappearance, is to jump into your own bed, into the abyss of the nothingness. is scary, but your heart needs to be so much stronger than your instinct that you need to lovingly and know and trust that Bhairava will be there to embrace you when you fall into his arms and there you will meet your eternity. Let's see how Prabhuji describes it. At the moment of your meeting with the Divine, in Hebrew, the Torah have a very beautiful expression. Lo ireni ha'adam b'chai. The one who will see me will not stay alive. Yeah. The revelation of the divine is your disappearance. And that scare your individuality your personality. Lo ireni adam v'chai, says Prabhuji. He's quoting the Torah. A human being cannot see me and stay alive. It's either you live with your fantasies, illusion, personality, or you see me. When seeing Bhairava, something needs to die in you to really merge into him. You, what you are, is never afraid. It's always there. It's Bhairava himself. It's your Bhairava nature. But whatever is afraid is your separation. So to live as a separate entity, to live in the unknown is to keep the boundaries. But in the moment that you go, and in certain moment, like the soul wants this liberation, it's the nature of the soul to reunite. But for that, we need to pass this barrier of fear. It's essential, Prabhuji says. It's, it's I indispensable. And this is what we do by confronting, and this is the merciful help of Bhairava that Prabhuji says is scary, very scary, but it's only in the beginning scary. It's only in the beginning. Let's see how it continues. But it's only in the beginning. Only in the beginning. It's love. And whenever you love, you die a little. Even in this world, when you love, you die a little. The other is the important, not you. 
And the meeting with awareness is a meeting with an ocean of infinite love. Compassionate and merciful. Behind the fierce exterior, Bhairava is believed to be compassionate and merciful towards sincere devotees. He offers his grace to those who seek spiritual growth and transformation. The symbolism of the Bhairava deity is that it's fearful but only in the beginning, as Prabhuji says. Because he wants you to grow, because he wants you to overcome, but it also will he help you and, if you are sincere, will hold you when you throw yourself into his unknown, he will be there to embrace you and to meet you with your true nature. So, in love, Prabhuji says, you disappear. So, it's the death of the lovers. And this is what Bhairava symbolizes, is the death out of love and compassion. If you want to be my devotee, you need to merge with me. You need to become one with me. And we cannot coexist. The light and the darkness cannot coexist. You are attached to the darkness. And if you want light, and you want light, you try to forget that you want light, but if you check, you want light. So you need to let go of the known, let go of the separation, let go of the darkness. And this is the invitation of Bhairava. Transcendence of dualities. Bhairava transcends dualities such as good and evil, light and dark, by embracing both aspects within himself. He teaches the lessons that true spiritual realization comes from transcending these dualities and embracing the unity of all things. We can see the development of Bhairava, the god Bhairava, that from being a Vedic deity to being one of the three aspects of the divine that is the one who destroys, to becoming in the Tantra context the Lord of the destruction of the ego. Finally, to be this one state of transcendental and supreme consciousness that is beyond all dualities. Bhairava in the non-dual Trika Shaivism symbolizes this state of pure and absolute awareness. And I will finish here and leave you with the words of Prabhuji, how he defines the path of the seekers from his ego to his disappearance. Thank you, Prabhuji, for teaching us the path of no fear, the path of surrender, and for bringing to our lives the beauty of the tantric deities like Bhairava. We will meet in the next class. Jai Prabhuji. When you face absolute existence, absolute awareness, consciousness, absolute bliss, absolute love, it is so it is so real that you feel that you as an illusion. It is so much consciousness that the experience is that that consciousness eliminate you as consciousness is so much awareness so much bliss so much love that is a love that almost kill you almost delete you
like you lose all your meaning. You, as an entity, separate, isolated, become meaningless. In order that a candle and his light will be meaningful in some way, you need darkness, a room, dark room, then the candle. It is meaningful. But if you put the candle in front of the sun, that candle will be totally lose all his purpose. will be difficult for you even to pay attention to the light of the candle in front of the sun.